Average cost of capital is going to be used to determine our discount rate. So remember in our valuation, <coughs> in our um, perpetuity valuation, we already determined our cash flow with our EBITDA that we modeled. And now we're going to be determining the discount rate to get to our financial perpetuity valuation. How magical is that? Um, our R, our discount rate, is the weighted average cost of capital, our WAC. It's going to be a combination of the cost of equity plus the cost of debt plus the cost of the preferred, weighted at the proportions that they are in terms of the actual amounts. So, for example, if it's 70% uh, equity and 30% debt, we're going to have to factor that in into the weighted average cost of capital. So the reason that we're actually going to be measuring this, so say we work as a CFO for a company or a chief financial officer for a company. Why are we always keeping an eye on the weighted average cost of capital or WAC? The reason we're doing so is we are trying to actually minimize what's called the cost of financing. The cost of financing is going to be represented by our R. So in terms of minimizing the cost of financing, it's a balance between the rate we're going to be paying the R as well as the debt to equity ratio to get to an optimal use of debt within a capital structure. So a capital structure relates to the how much debt and how much equity we have on our balance sheet uh, in terms of financing our company. So in terms of our sources of capital, we are trying to minimize the cost, of, we are trying to minimize how much equity we use, maximize our debt, and at doing so, we minimize our discount rate. So this is what this point is representing, the optimal use of debt within our company. So I just want you to keep in, think in terms of these keywords and write this stuff down when you get a chance. All right, I think we can move on from framing valuation and valuation on to, let's see. Let's write down the different financial statements that we have within a company to make sure we have all this stuff down. So at a high level, we are definitely going to want to make sure that we have our financial statements and a knowledge of them, at least what they are. So who here knows, who here can name the three different financial statements that any given company has? Okay, good, because we're going to write this stuff down because nobody raised their hand, so. We have to use financial statements in order to get to our CF, our cash flow. So in order to determine our EBITDA, we're going to have to use our financial statements in order to get there. So this is why we talk about financial statements in terms of a company. It's going to be the balance sheet, the income statement, and the statement of cash flow. So let's write this down, everybody. If you are a private equity professional, if you are an entrepreneur, if you are a, an investment banking professional like myself, you are going to need to be very well acquainted with the balance sheet, the income statement, the statement of cash flows, how these connect together, and how they are um, integrated. So in building a financial statement model, we are actually going to be taking the information gleaned from the financial statements in order to input them into a financial statement model in order to get to a valuation for a company. So we're using this information to determine EBITDA, proxy for cash flow, which is right here, our CF, and we're using our R, discount rate, used from our financial statements as well, to get to a perpetuity value, a financial perpetuity value. And the reason we want certainty regarding pricing is certainty regarding pricing facilitates an M&A transaction. And the key for us as investment bankers is originating an M&A transaction, uh, doing mandate target matching, as well as closing on a deal. So that's what we're talking about, so M&A execution. So how are we looking for time, everybody? I think we're about 15 minutes. He is a guy who runs a company called Berkshire Hathaway. So I want everyone to write down the, the company name called Berkshire Hathaway. So we're going to say Warren Buffett. 
And Warren Buffett wrote, bo writes books and writes 10Ks for all of his shareholders to understand the value of his company and how exactly this works. So we're going to take a look at who Ber or Berkshire Hathaway is in just a moment here. So this is the big finance company that owns so many different other companies. Berkshire Hathaway o actually owns Coca-Cola. If you guys know who Coca-Cola is, obviously. <laughs> That's a joke. And so we're going to BerkshireHathaway.com. You can learn a lot from messages from Warren Buffett. You can learn all about this. He writes different mes messages with annual and interim reports, special letters from Warren, Charlie Reed regarding the past, present, and future. This is stuff that you're definitely going to want to take a look at. Warren's letter. He writes all about valuation and all about the nature of the value of his company. This is all stuff that they teach you in business school. This is the primary guy who you learn about in business school is Warren Buffett in this company called Berkshire Hathaway. So regarding uh, SEC filings, we're going to click on these right, really quick here. And we're going to take a look at an example of a 10K, which is an annual report, and an example of a 10Q, which is a quarterly report. So let's see here. I think this is the right one here, Berkshire Hathaway. So he, he files under different names for companies because he has so many of them. But I think it's Berkshire Hathaway Life Insurance Corporation, 13F, that's different than what we're looking for, we're looking for. Yeah, filing 13F, maybe they amended it. But let's just open one up, let's see if we can find one that's Yeah, just give an example. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, so make sure you write down 10K and 10Q. 10K is going to be the end. So here it is. This is what a, a 10K annual report for a publicly traded company looks like. And this is for Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's company. So it's going to start with uh, different portions of it, part one, part two, part three, and part four. And we're going to have our financial statements that we talked about in it, the balance sheet, the income statement, et cetera, as well as other, um, uh, how do you say, uh, written portion of it. So for example, if we click on business, we're going to learn about the company. So Warren Buffett's company is going to be talked about Berkshire Hathaway Inc. is a holding company, owning subsidiaries, engaged in a number of different diverse business activities. The most important of these are insurance business conducted on a primary basis and reinsurance basis, a freight rail transportation business, a group utility, etc. So one of the most important things to actually go through and learn about here is called the MDNA, the Manager's Discussion and Analysis. So let's see if we can find that really quick here. When you're reading through a 10K, to learn the most information, because these are about 100 pages, you're going to look, learn, uh, look for what's called an MDNA, a Manager's Discussion and Analysis.